Lucas was diagnosed with stage four neuroblastoma in July of 2014. And we came here for the initial testing to figure out what was gonna go on. Then found out about how DeVos specializes in neuroblastoma and one of the leading researchers in neuroblastoma, Dr. Scholler. And once we got here in that 10 days of the initial care, chemo, that stuff, we knew we were in a place we wanted to stay in. And, and it's, um, that brought us here in the beginning and uh, we're happy we're here. As a parent, you're at your worst. You're absolute worst when you when you get this diagnosis. Every parent, it's every parent's worst nightmare is what we end up living, the parents that are here. But from a child's standpoint, I can't understand what they must be dealing with. They, they don't understand this. They don't understand some of the things that are going on and what's happening. And with child life, that's the beauty of them because they come in and the kids have fun. They just have fun. When I try to explain to people who aren't familiar with child life what the role is of that team, um, the easy answer is, is that they're here to provide a normal environment for children. In part of their work then, it's to provide therapy through play, through art, through music, through pet therapy, through a variety of um, approaches to connect with each child and meet them where they are and help them through this experience that is um, scary and not their choice and out of control um, and all the things that, that kids experience when they um, come to the hospital. So we use a tremendous amount um, of, and with tremendous success, we're able to do a lot with distraction. We can sew up um, lacerations in the emergency department with maybe just a small amount of medication and a whole lot of distraction. And so whether that's um, blowing bubbles or that's finding Where's Waldo or that's doing some music, um, it's just a great way to distract the child. And it's amazing what you can do with just that type of interaction. Completely, completely, we're going to move it over. For a child to miss much school in, in this day and age is really significant. And so we have a, a formal certified teacher who is a liaison to their school and actually keeps them um, as up to speed as possible in their actual curriculum so they don't fall far behind. And that, that piece is just incredibly important. Miss Sarah was able to come in and sit with him and show him all different things and work with him and work through the difficulties sometimes where he didn't want to do things. I don't want to do my letters. I don't want to do this. And she would approach it in a way that we as parents couldn't. Oh, man. <laughs> so music therapy is relatively new to our program. You know, they may not be wanting to talk about their feelings or their emotions. They may not be in the mood to um, have deep conversations, but music can almost always connect. Recognizing the developmental state of our newborns, uh, our premature babies in our neonatal population, um, child life and, and our other therapists have helped us understand that that gentle, constant pressure of touch, those soft, muted voices, so we'll do some humming and some gentle um, gentle talking to the, to the children. Swaddling can be very soothing as well. So just those um, very consistent approaches and practices during procedures or other things can really help to soothe that baby. Oh, big girl, good job. Our child life team also, um, they support the whole family. And so the therapy goes beyond just the child as well. Um, when a child's sick, whether it's chronic or terminal or even short term, the whole family's impacted. They talk with the parents, they talk with the children, and they talk with the siblings. Because that was one of the hardest moments for us when um, Reese told our daughter and our son that Lucas had cancer. And that was one of the most emotional moments Besides Lucas being diagnosed, that was probably the second hardest moment for us because she she understood what was going on, but Reese had a beautiful way to explain it to her and she she understood. It was a, a, a moment I'll never forget because he was like, we take care of that, we deal with all of it, and, and they did and they handled it beautifully. We are so appreciative of the support of this community that's allowed us to really build and develop an, an amazing team um, who make a, a, an incredible impact every day. Um, we are able to explore new areas of care such as the NICU, um, certainly in some of our ambulatory clinics, and we appreciate that support. We couldn't do it without um, that, that type of support and commitment to this program. He talks about who his favorite people here are, and, and it's always child life people he's listing. Their hearts, it, are bigger than anybody's that I can imagine just because of what they are able to do with all of these kids in all of these different situations and all of these parents in these different situations and be able to work with everybody. I couldn't say enough good things about those folks.